Day three of the Israel Defense Forces Operation Shield and Arrow against the Palestinian Islamic Jihad terror group in Gaza. And air raid sirens have sounded during the past hour at Kibbutz Kisufim in the Gaza border area, though no reports yet of rocket fire. Now this comes after Israel carried out a targeted killing in the early hours of the morning. The IDF taking out Ali Rali, the commander of Islamic Jihad's rocket forces unit in Gaza. Gaza. Raleigh and two other PIJ militants were killed in an airstrike in a house in the Khan Yunus camp in southern Gaza. The IDF said in a statement, Raleigh was responsible for directing and carrying out rocket fire at Israeli territory, including the recent barrages during Operation Shield and Arrow. According to the IDF, over 500 rockets have been fired from Gaza into Israel over the past three days, most either intercepted by the Iron Dome or David Sling missile defense system or falling into open areas. No Israelis have been killed or injured from direct rocket fire. Palestinian sources say over 20 Gaza residents have been killed either by Israeli fire or rockets fired from Gaza that landed within the Strip. Well, joining us in studio is uh, our senior correspondent Owen Alterman and uh, Colonel uh, Daron Avital, former commander of Israel's elite special forces unit. But let's jump first to our I-24 News uh, defense correspondent, John. Jonathan Regev in Tel Aviv. And Jonathan, uh, tell us uh, with sirens, but no reports yet of rockets down south. Yes, there are no reports of uh, rockets so far. There was one alarm in uh, Kibbutz Kisufim, which sits right on the border of France, right in front of a uh, uh, Yunis inside the Gaza Strip. This was the only report as of uh, midnight, uh, more or less. Um, I would not count on this day uh, continuing like this. Uh, the PIJ, I, I suspect, will not sit quietly uh, following the fact that one of the uh, one of their senior commanders was again uh, uh, taken uh, down. So, therefore, all the reports that we saw in the past uh, 20 hours or so of a ceasefire, at least for now, it is not happening. Still, it, it is something that may be happening quite soon. We know already that that yesterday uh, the Palestinian factions, mostly the Islamic Jihad. Uh, had an interest in a ceasefire. I think that Israel is also coming to a place that is interested in a ceasefire. Israel, if it leaves uh, the campaign now, can clearly come with uh, come out of it uh, with with a few uh, success stories. Uh, the, the successful killing of uh, at least for the moment four senior Islamic Jihad uh, officials. And the damage for citizens inside the Gaza Strip, not something that is too big, uh, that will bring a lot of international pressure on Israel. Uh, and on the other hand, the, the damage within Israel is also something that is not too big uh, for the moment. No injuries, no no victims, as you said. Uh, this can change at any minute, any missile. The, we, we have seen a few uh, rockets yesterday making landfall in Israel. They can bring casualties in Israel. Uh, the rockets fired to Gaza can bring uh, eventually a lot of damage to the civilian population. So Israel, I think, is coming to a place where it may be interested in ending the campaign. An interesting report coming this morning uh, about a possible American pressure on Israel uh, now to put a hold on this campaign. Up until now, a, a lot of American support for Israel in this. If the Americans are, are telling Israel that it's time to put the, to, to, to press the brake, uh, I think it will uh, eventually uh, lead Israel into a position that it will be interested in this campaign to stop having achieved practically everything that it wanted. All right, uh, Jonathan Regev, uh, thank you for that. Uh, well, Daron, let's talk about the achievement of uh, overnight, the targeted killing of Ali Rali. How significant, or what is the significance I of that? I think it's significant. I think it's a success. This is a commander in the field. This is the guy who's responsible for launching all those rockets attacks. So it's a very, it's a very successful operation. And I, now, it's, now we can understand why Israel was hesitating in regards to the ceasefire last evening, because there were more targets that it had to, or more uh, objective that it had to achieve. And um, now I'm completely uh, in agreement with what was said. I think ceasefire is in the interest of Israel with respect to the separation. In the meantime, though, we are getting more uh, the rocket sirens going off yeah, in it, southern It was Israel. expected, the retaliation. Yeah. Uh, we were expecting a, a, a retaliation. Yeah. We'll have to see how much. Owen, uh, Jonathan mentioned reports of perhaps American pressure on Israel uh, to reach a ceasefire. Though in the meantime,
in the, the, the comments in the meantime have been supportive. We'll get to that in a minute. Stay with us. We're going to go to our Hamda Salhud, who is in uh, Ashkelon, uh, uh, Hamda. Uh, of course, reports of air raid sirens a little to the south of you, not yet in Ashkelon, but Ashkelon, of course, has seen rocket fire in the over the past two, couple of days. Good morning, Kalev. Red alerts in the towns of Nadim and Ksufim, which are a little bit more south of here. If you're looking at the Gaza Strip on a map, they are more central and south to where we are. But Ashkelon is no stranger to the rocket fire. You could see behind me the debris from a direct hit yesterday. Neighbors here are saying that two years ago, just a couple of houses down, one of those houses was hit by rocket fire from the Gaza Strip. Now that during the 2021 war in May, which was almost exactly two years ago. Now, residents here are saying that this shed that was hit, I'm going to step out of the frame to show you this shed that was hit caused damage to the house with breaking windows. So there was a direct impact on a car here on this shed. No red alerts here as of just yet. No red alerts in Stirot, another southern town on the Gaza border that is used to the pounding of rocket fire when escalations and flare-ups happen. To give you a summary, the Israeli military says that 507 rockets and mortars were launched from the Gaza Strip. 368 crossed over into Israeli territory. 154 of them were intercepted and 147 targets were struck. So this is a general sense of what's going on here in the 9 a.m. hour in southern Israel. Still kind of quiet. It's been more than eight hours since we have seen any sort of rocket fire. We are hearing those red alerts in other places in the south, but we're not yet seeing any rocket fire or interceptions just yet. All right, Hamda Salhut there in Ashkelon. Daron, this raises the question, the fact that we haven't, we hear the alerts, we haven't seen rockets, is even not the uh, response we would expect for the killing of a senior figure at PIJ. Is that an indication that Islamic Jihad is also looking perhaps for a ceasefire, it doesn't want to escalate the situation. I the think they look for a ceasefire. I'm sure about that. The question is whether they would like to have some victory images. It's uh, portrayed always and have some attack during the day. So we should expect and should we should be on alert for rocket attacks during this day. But I hope by the next, by the end of the evening or the, tomorrow, then ceasefire could be achieved. Uh, Owen, uh, Jonathan Regev, we were talking as reported American uh, uh, officials, though public supporting Israel, reports of uh, or behind the scenes pressuring Israel perhaps to bring this round of fighting to a close. Yeah, it's obviously possible. Even in the public statement, Kalev, there is a, a thick hint right in the readout of the call between National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and his counterpart in Israel, Tzachi Negbi, where again expresses the ironclad commitment to Israel's security and that standard language used by the Biden administration, again, Israel's ability to defend itself from indiscriminate rocket attacks. But the statement also in the same paragraph noted the talks for a ceasefire and emphasized the need to de-escalate. So that hint is there even in the public statement. Again, as we know from past campaigns in Gaza, there is the metaphor of a clock that is ticking where the United States, whatever administration is in power at the time, gives Israel a certain amount of leeway and a certain amount of time to carry out operations in Gaza. But at a certain point, there's international pressure on Israel and for that matter on the United States. Typically in those campaigns, as civilian casualties and damage in Gaza start to mount and then the approval or the support given by the United States tends to narrow and the pressure starts to mount on Israel. Uh, exactly how that balance is struck is something that, as you mentioned, Clev is first done privately often, and then we start to see it in a more public-facing manner. Uh, again, this is a campaign where there was a significant number of civilian casualties in the initial strike, but not since then, at least not from Israel's part, uh, from what we have seen, and not significant damage in Gaza, at least compared to previous campaigns. Of course, we're only in the third day, so obviously, should this campaign continue, and I, I agree with what's been said here that that's not necessarily where we're headed, but in principle, should that continue, obviously that would continue to mount, and obviously we would see similar dynamics we've seen in the past, especially more pressure in Israel to stop. All right, Doron Avitalo and Alterman, stay with us uh, as we just reported. Just even in the last few minutes, more air raid sirens in the south at Kibbutz Nirim along the Gaza border. We'll continue to follow the developing situation.